This is from uh, Matt Binder's appearance. You should go. I'll go watch it. Maybe if Binder puts it up, you should watch it. I'm going to be a little bit uh, condescending, and I'm going to uh, uh, point out where why it's so difficult to do these shows. Seamus shows data, at least from 1988. Mm. It happened. Uh, we have edge cases that are clearly citable. We have the legal definition of abortion. We have a clear moral uh, difference. But I'll give you an example of where I think the problem lies, and I'm going to throw it back to explain the Thanos moment mm. with Sam Cedar. <clears throat> Sam doesn't know what deontology oh or utilitarianism is. Pause it. So pause it for a second. With pause it for a second. I think I do know what deontology and utilitarianism is. <laughs> and de deontology, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is just basically like religion. There's a right and a wrong. And it doesn't matter what the context is. This is the way that you need to operate in politics, which I think is the stupidest, most 16-year-old I just read and Rand, and I'm kidding myself, uh, a thing that you could believe in is relevant for politics. And same uh, analysis can be applied to utilitarianism. <laughs> and utilitarianism, well, utilitarianism is like what ends up working uh, best for the largest amount of people. And I think to a certain extent, that you could is a relatively decent way of expressing my politics. I mean... Yeah, but again, it's just like it's childish, like the, the it's a childish way to talk about politics. Right. I but mean, that's the, who I, he's speaking to. He's trying yes. to that's well, that's his he's, he's trying to trap him. And if you he, get he there moved up one step from Marvel movies to these fancy terms. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. And, it's, and it is a way to make it seem like I, I've actually put a lot of thought into this I'm as being, opposed to yeah. as opposed to the idea of like, I'm going to determine what my opinion is on how government actions or lack of actions implicate the lives of human beings but before i get there i'm going to mediate that perspective on this philosophy that i uh, read about yeah for like five minutes you know what that's called religion <laughs> that's religion it's just a different name and I referenced deontological thinking versus utilitarianism. He said, I don't understand what that is. How do you explain to someone who doesn't understand these concepts what they are? How would you propose I, I explain deontology or utilitarianism? I, I mean, I, I, I think I just uh, did. I don't know if I said, like, I don't know what that is, but whatever. Uh, maybe I did. I because think you're I, uninter uninterested at that point. Because I just honestly just, it is the... As far as I'm concerned, and we we're talking about politics, to bring up like these uh, these these uh, terms of uh, these philosophical terms as a way of like this is where my politics come from. Yeah. What? Yeah. If uh, if discovering the uh, uh, the term deontological made you change your mind on Medicare for all, for instance. <laughs> well, I have to like you know like the 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 idea that you're going to be locked in to a right or wrong principle that is religion. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's removing all context in which and that's the only, you know, playing field in which someone like Tim Pool is comfortable debating on. But he needed to explain Practical it to me in context. a way that I would understand, which was Marvel movies. And of course, my son at that point was too young. He wasn't quite uh, seven uh, at that point. So we hadn't watched any Marvel movies, but we have now. We've watched them all because he's nine now. <laughs> I don't know. What if I use something that is common to most people like a movie? I mean, oh if you God. want to do that, sure. maybe if I'm dealing with someone who doesn't know <laughs> philosophy, they're not. I'm not saying See, they have is, to this know. Is the, that. This is the thing. I understand on your show and you like to have the discussion, but I don't. I don't deal in the philosophical. I just don't. I just don't. I deal with actual policy and what's actually going on and what happens to people in real life. Um, what, do you, what do you think nice I mean by have, philosophical? It's nice that just Good. opining about hypotheticals. You do that um, all the that, time. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, then what? Well, this is another another really great point. Sure. I think that you and Sam <laughs> lack the perspicacity to understand <laughs> perspicacity! the substance of them. So, in the context of Sam Cedar, I made a reference to I'm going to look that up. Hold on. Perspicacity. He has a thesaurus in front of him, guys. Perspicacious, perspicacity. <laughs> word of the day. I have always perception. thought. Perception. It's uh, <laughs> the, it, it, it comes from the word perception. I've always thought Pers that Sam and Bender the lacked the perspicacity. Yeah. <laughs> they have a perspicacity deficiency. Yeah. That's. I think it's about perspiring. It's hereditary. It's very simple. <laughs> the quality the of having ready insight into things. Okay. 
So I, I, uh, I, I probably do have the perspicacity, but I probably don't refer to it that way. Hmm. Well, I think he's saying you lack perspicacity, but I guess we'll find out here. Well, no, he does say I lack it, but I would argue that I do have it. But go ahead. You and Sam lack the perspicacity to understand the context of the arguments and the substance of them. Yeah. So in the context of Sam Cedar, I made a reference to deontology, that a moral act against a single individual cannot be, an immoral act against a single individual shall not be taken versus utilitarianism, which is more the argument that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, which is also a pop culture reference. The idea being that we tend what? to see villainous people as those who are willing to sacrifice people for the sake of other people. We tend to see heroes as those who are willing to save the He's individual. proving Bender's point. Sam yeah. didn't know what those words meant. Sure. But they're hugely important to our policy in this country. The oh, trolley no. problem, as it were. <laughs> is, a, is a question about whether you're willing to kill a person to save five people. These are questions of deontology versus utilitarianism. Sam doesn't know those words. And I'm not saying it to be mean to him. It's not, I'm sure. not, not everybody knows philosophy. But if I'm trying to convey ideas, the only thing I can do is try to find common ground between us. Big movie just came out, Avengers. So if you don't understand deontology or utilitarianism, which is the academic approach, I can try the pop culture approach. Me, I love pop culture references. Instead of oh, actually, I know you do. Yeah. Instead of actually addressing the substance Pause it for one of the second. issue, this in, this the, the Thanos thing happened like what, like four years ago? It's a long. And this has time been ago. haunting him. And this is what I was saying at the beginning of this was that this is so much about the insecurity that he feels. It is not at all about how he can communicate to me. Because I got news for you. I don't even think it's Thanos example is even right in the context of, I don't think he has the perspicacity to understand that his Thanos uh, example does not describe a deontological versus utilitarian perspective on this at all. And, and, oh. and even if it did, it is not applicable to our politics because we make those decisions every day in our politics. Every day. Should we have the speed limit at 30 miles an hour? Because if we did, we would save more lives. Like, we do these things all the time. Mm -hmm. You do this in medicine. You do this in vaccines. You do it in every medical procedure you take. You do it in the insurance companies do it. Medicare does it. I mean, we could just go on and on and on. Food stamps, like you know, yeah, yeah like buildings. Yeah. Like, you know, like we we do like we make these trade-offs all the time. Yeah. And the difference is is that when Thanos did it, it was just because it was in Thanos' head and he was going around doing it. But if as a society we had mechanisms to determine like there's a, um, there is a, uh, a meteor coming and hitting, uh, you know, New York city, or there's a nuclear weapon that's coming. Mm -hmm. We need to, you know, salvage, uh, some people. We may not be able to tell people it, 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 it you know, people are going to be going, you know, uh, climbing over each other. I mean, all of these possible scenarios are there, but He's just so caught up and so wants yeah. to talk theoretically and hypothetical about he has politics to. because he has to. Yeah. He has to. That's the only way that you can you you, you can hide uh, the ball. Hide the ball or in, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, go on that. I just have to make a point about Tim trying to portray himself as some beleaguered school teacher here. Right. As if he was trying to just talk about deontology and utilitarianism and then just had to, because Sam was the audience, had to go to Avengers. I'm looking at an article from 2018, uh, The Irresponsible Moral Dilemma at the Heart of Avengers Infinity War. This is from Vox, and it is exactly <coughs> his argument. So he literally just read a Vox piece right. that used it. And <laughs> like, I like him acting like, he. oh, I guess I'll go to pop culture. That, that, that's the first place <laughs> you heard of these concepts too, Tim. Exactly. But also the trolley problem is like 
literally a hypothetical. Yeah, right. well, they're he all gets, hypotheticals. He, right. like, he's, he, he gets so mad. He's like, I'm not doing that. The trolley problem is there, there are. It's a vacuum. If it's There's not no a hypothetical, context. it's like, a fucking cartoon Avengers uh, yeah. superhero movie. I mean, like, there's no practical application of what he's talking about because like on that on that playing field i have ultimate faith in what sam or myself or bender to actually make those arguments that's why he's trying to trying to engage with bender on that plane because that's the well, only way he could like throw you off with uh but with he should this. have he's me back on because he could so easily manhandle me intellectually oh yeah you're right that it, it would be it would be the proper punishment for me to put me in my place in this way continue Instead, Sam and many others just mocked the idea that I had to dumb down the concepts for him because he didn't get it. You see, this is a problem. If I approach in good faith, Sam, with a question about philosophy that he cannot understand. Now, wait a second. Pause term, it. Also, you know what? We should go deep into this, too, because he did a 20 minute recap of that someone just sent me. He did a 20 minute recap of that interview and was like, Sam told me things that I didn't know. And I told Sam things that he didn't know. Yeah, here it is. Somebody had just sent this to me today, actually, and I had no, I had never seen it before. His first reaction? His first reaction here, and here it is. That's interesting always how Tim gets his story straight. Yeah, it's, you know, it's really funny. This has developed over time because he's so insecure, so like insecure. a child. And he's talking insecure boys, oh, too. You're about to watch a discussion. Here, put, put it up. Yeah, put it up. This is just the intro from... The discussion I had with you're about to watch a discussion I had with political commentator, YouTuber, podcaster Sam Cedar. I believe that we had a pretty good conversation yeah. and I want to make a few points before it gets started because I just really, really can't stand the posturing and the bad faith attacks. I have tremendous respect for Sam for, oh, uh, thank for you. you know, coming on and having a conversation with me. I think there are many things he brought up that I didn't know and he made excellent points. I pushed back on, on my feelings and thoughts based on what I knew. I think there are some things I knew that he didn't. You know, I made reference to certain things. So n neither of us are perfect. But I, I, in, I, I know that whenever you do these kind of things, invariably there's going to be people saying like, aha, did you see Sam dunk on Tim? Or did you see Tim dunk on Sam? No, 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 no. Both of us view the world in a different way based on the news we consume and the articles we've read. And there may be things I don't fully understand. And I think that's fair. And I genuinely tried to have a real conversation with Sam to, to kind of break down what our feelings are. It may be possible that Sam says some things that are incorrect, and I wasn't able to fact check it. It's also entirely possible I've said some things that are incorrect, and Sam wasn't able to fact check it. In fact, it, it, right in the beginning, he does bring up a point about the aggregate polls for impeachment, and I have tremendous respect for, for his position, why he believes it. And I want to stress this simply because the conversation we had is very important. It's not about me trying to prove him wrong and win a debate. It's about us trying, at least for me, it's about me trying to have a conversation with somebody where I know we have some disagreements. That's about it. I think in the end, you know, I've done conversations with David Pakman, and now I have a conversation with Sam Cedar, and I think there are some things I didn't know before, and they helped me understand. David made some actual excellent points when uh, I had a conversation with him. I think in the end, we'll continue to disagree. We'll go back to viewing the news we view, and in okay. the end, All we'll right. both have So there's this thing, and we can go to uh, my wrap-up of that, which does not exist because I thought <laughs> I forgot about it moments after I was done. All right, but let's, let's, see, let's see where he's going after this. So I try to find common ground, and he mocks me for it. What is my incentive to even try? What does that have to do with... Uh, it sounds like an issue you should take up with Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Now, right after the thing, when he's doing his recap, I'm not mocking him. I didn't mock him. I just didn't care. I didn't care about his Thanos thing. Same thing Binder tried to make, which is like, we're not talking about all this sort of like navel gazing, castles yeah. in the sky bullshit. You are about the trolley problem that seems to be ex explanatory of all of politics. If, if, I mean, if we're talking about politics, this is not about like what I know or you know. It is about, like, let's talk about this concretely. Let's right. talk about what's right for and society, the, the right way to structure our society, and, like, using actual examples that we're dealing with today. As opposed in this to, moment. Yeah. Well, he's, like, he's, he's catering to, like, insecure boys who, like, you know, it's like going to college and you're 101 class and you're suddenly, the, your eyes open up. But he's doing it in real time as an adult. 
talking to you. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Well, here's like, the thing. It reeks of insecurity. It, but he knows and Crowder knows. Look, if Crowder, if they were really concerned about the issues, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter that, oh, I'm only going to debate Ethan because he's the only one can talk about these issues. Or I'm only going to debate this person because they're the only one to talk about the issues. They, their whole marketing is that we just care about the issues. They don't talk just about care about issues, ideas. Though. Well, if that's the case, then who cares who you're debating about it? Who cares about my process as far as like I'm willing to jump on somebody else's Zoom thing? Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Make it about the video. You want to fact check me as I go through it? By all means, I'm, have your producer do it every time I come up with something and I am you. I don't care. But they, the, it really is ultimately about them being cowardly. And, and, and not both inside themselves because they have never really been subjected to an actual debate about these things and also in their um, in their positions. They don't want to lose their audience to you. If their ecosystem is disrupted, then the brainwashing stops. Yes. You know, here's they the, here's open up their philosophy book, they pick a topic every day, they teach their little students, and then they don't put any context around it because they're little privileged boys who don't and, need to think about the consequences of these ideas. And the bottom line is they're not going to lose their audience to me. Like, you know, it, 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 there's no, know. there is Maybe. no scenario. No, there is no scenario where I go on these shows and like all of a sudden like a million people left Crowder or Tim. Pool. No, they've got a lot of people in there who, 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 um, uh, they, th that are, 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 uh, loyal to them. There are maybe some marginal cases and it might are. cause their audience to ask Tim pool, like, Hey, wait about this it might make them think a little bit more critically about what they're being heard, what they're hearing. But they're not going to lose. They're still going to. He's still going to be able to make his millions of dollars a year, and that's the. You know, that's that's the thing. But he doesn't want to look understand. bad, Sam. It's, well, it's also it's, like it's it shows experience. his insecurity. So if you, it's not just that you might steal his audience. You're exposing that he's not as strong, and then that's a weakness. And his audience sees the weakness, and little by little, you're chipping away at his money. Well, that's the. Uh, that's the. That's why when I started doing this, I made sure that I was coming off as full soy boy <laughs> so that I would never have to live up to that, that, um, that, uh, impossible standard of being completely bulletproof. That's why that's, uh, that's the value of starting off like that as, as, as someone who's weak. Um, Travis from Pittsburgh just voted for John Fetterman. Everyone nice. else who's in Pennsylvania should do the same solution so to the trolley easy. problem is to have breaks. 